break things, because we like to solve problems, because it's profitable. You know, a lot of us uh, are very talented in this DEF CON community, but it started making sense that now this is where hacking and um, whether they're good at it or not, regardless of your opinion, uh, we saw the id unleashed. We saw people expressing themselves via technology, via hacking, even if low level, uh, in a new way. We thought that this was pretty important. So maybe as a student of history, um, people don't really know who the black hand was or what they did or why they mattered. Um, certainly not at the time, but the black hand was a little group. I don't even remember what they completely stood for, but they assassinated Archduke Ferdinand. Um, which set the world on fire and is largely credited for starting World War I. Now, why the heck did that happen? It wasn't that assassinating one dude was going to start World War. It's that there was tremendous entanglement and tension and unrest in Europe. And that was the arbitrary spark that lit the world on fire. It would have been something else. And it felt to a few of us that, you know, this chaotic activity, the state of the world, joblessness, distrust in government, following Europe, following the American empire. It felt like we were watching history. Maybe this time, instead of reacting to it, perhaps we can get in front of it. So a lot of people are dismissive about Anonymous, but our pursuit of trying to, for the next for the following year, build a, uh, we did a blog series called Building a Better Anonymous. And by talking about all the ways in which such a, an, act, an activist group could be more principled, could be more focused, could be more potent for their own purposes and their own interests, um, but also to hurt, uh, reduce collateral damage, um, we felt we had to start engaging and getting people talking. I mean, you might remember a year ago, if you talked about a non, they punished you. I mean, they destroyed Aaron Barr. And even some of the ones they claimed they were free speech were attacking journalists like Brian Krebs. So we really wanted to, to confront this, not because it was cool or sexy, because it was actually risky, but because it was important. So how do we get to the ITU? Well, if you pay attention to what it angers and infuriates a non, it's things like SOPA, right? And you know what? It kind of angers and infuriates most of us. And I, I probably should have prefaced it up. I'm speaking as a, an individual citizen. My opinions are not reflective of my opinion. Um, <laughs> uh, but essentially, um, there's this false dichotomy, and I think uh, Michael's article really did a beautiful job of this, which is maybe it's a little more simplified to say the tension between chaos and control. There's this great Commander X quote. He said, given the choice between tyranny and, control, and chaos, I will choose chaos. And what occurred to us is, but don't you see that one fuels the other? And we saw this escalating tension, right? Michael asked me in my dining room, he said, so don't you think some of these attempts in these technologies are gonna give more control and fix some of these security issues? And I said, no. I mean, this is our, our hacker proxy. We are the hacker ruling class, right? We don't exercise our might very much. Remember when the Great Firewall of China went up? What did the CDC do? They poked through, right? There's a crack in everything. You know, I said, I'm not so much concerned that you, I said the attempts to control the internet are foolish, they're impossible. I mean, I, I echo a lot of what Rod says. I said, my concern with Anonymous isn't that they're going to um, you know, take over the world, it's that I'm afraid they're gonna scare policymakers into being stupid enough to try to control the internet. So really what we wanted to find was what's that beautiful balance point Okay, so if you don't know what Chaos Monkey is, um, Netflix came up with Chaos Monkey and their AWS slices. It's at all times introducing faults and failures. And because of it, because it's kept them honest and vibrant, they were the only uh, web service that was up and running after the April 21st or 24th outage. And it's my belief that a little bit of chaos is a beautiful and vital and necessary thing. But too much chaos can undo rights and freedoms and liberties and stability that it took us hundreds of years to, in blood and treasure to win. So I want us to be the force of organized chaos. I want us to say when we see threats foreign or domestic to our way of life and the things that we care about, that we need to be a, a, a balancing effect and to temper that. And that might mean over, as that overzealous, reckless, low sec types that are scaring people into making stupid policy decisions. And it may also be making sure we have hackers and packet guys testifying to Congress to make sure they don't help the bad guys with silly proposed legislation. So we've been fairly passive, and we've been passive for some this, and we tend to think about you know, the thing we're trying to crack and the protocol we're trying to fuzz. And I want you guys to start realizing that I'm hoping that you can realize that we are potentially that ruling class 
know, we can keep the internet just the way we want it, but we're either going to be a force of destabilization or a force of that chaotic order and uh, balance. I don't know what the balance is, but I know that too few of us are thinking about the social impact.